Hello everyone, Metallian Magic here, and today I will be providing you with some new content for uh, your viewing pleasure. Uh, this is something that I was inspired to do when listening to Marshall Sutcliffe and John Laux uh, on their podcast, Constructed Resources. And at the beginning of the episodes of that show, they do something called the Opening Seven, where they take an opening hand. Um, they've been doing mostly standard decks, but uh, I assume in the future they will you know, they, they could do modern decks, legacy decks, whatever, you know, but they, they uh, look at an opening hand from a constructed deck, usually something that did well at uh, a recent tournament, and they discuss uh, the hand and talk about whether or not it's a keepable hand, um, and then analyze the reasoning uh, behind that decision. So they, they look at the hand, you know, if you're drawing this hand, uh, usually let's say on the play against an unknown opponent, uh, would you keep it, would you mulligan it, and why do you come to that conclusion? Uh, so I'm going to be doing this exercise with uh, a build of a standard Jeskai deck. Um, this is the, the deck that uh, you may know to have Mantis Riders and Burn Spells and Goblin Rabble Masters and stuff like that. So uh, I will be actually doing a double shot for you. I will be uh, drawing two opening hands in this video and talking a little bit about uh, those hands and ultimately either... Uh, keeping or mulliganing and drawing a six, and then uh, playing out uh, and gold goldfishing a few turns uh, with with uh, the keepable hands to uh, to show you how they might potentially play out. So, without further ado, let's get to it. All right, and we're back for the opening seven. So I'm going to draw a hand of seven cards. Here we've got one, two, three, four, five, six. Seven. So I'm going to uh, then take a look and interesting. And then we'll uh, I'll sort of go over what I would do with this hand. Would I keep it or would I mulligan it? So I and and let's let's say we're on the play. Um, we'll we'll be on the play for this. So I think I would probably keep this. But let me talk through my reasoning a little bit before I make that final decision. So, I think that I would keep this because we can lead off with Mystic Monastery. So we can we can play our comes into play tapped land on turn one, and this land gives us access to um, all three colors of mana that our deck needs to produce. On turn two, we can play this island, and on either our turn or our opponent's end step, we can Magma Jet them. So we've already drawn a card for turn two, and now we're going to be looking at the next two cards uh, to set up our turn three draw. And it's likely that we will be able to find a land out of those two cards, or if both of them are non-land cards, push them to the bottom in the hopes of finding a land um, on the third card down. Because once we hit that third land, the rest of our hand gets turned on and it's very good. You know, the rest of our hand is, um, Goblin Rabble Master, Hushwing Griff. Uh, we can even like play Rabble Master. Next turn, leave mana up um, for Just Guy Charm to Hushwing Griff on the end of our opponent's turn because it has Flash. Or you know, once we've created a, a couple of goblins, use one of our charms to give our creatures plus one plus one and and uh, give them Life Link uh, until end of turn. But like we don't have anything right now in our hand that costs above three so once we draw that third land like we're playing probably playing rabble master on turn three depending on what our opponent does and then we have options on the turns beyond um so i think that i would keep this uh but if this hand didn't have magma jet if this were a different card i don't know if i would and this kind of shows why magma jet is important to this deck um magma jet is a way to either kill off a creature early on or, you know, kind of start chipping away at your opponent's life total. Um, or late in the game, it's a way to finish them off if they're really low or combine it with atta an attack to finish them off. But um, like late in the game, the scry can find you maybe that last thing you need to finish them off. And early in the game, the scry can find you whatever it is you need, whether it's another land or another threat. You know, it's, it's, it's kind of nice to be able to uh, end step, turn two, magma jet them and be able to uh, to set up your your draw for either the next turn or the next two turns potentially so like let's let's uh play this out for a turn or two to see how this would have worked out so like turn one we play mystic monastery we say go turn two we we untap the monastery 
we draw a card to stoke the flames. Uh, we play a, a lightning. Sh uh, sorry, <laughs> what am I saying? We play a, an island, and then either on our turn or our opponent's end step, we magma jet them. We scry two, and that would bring us to see just guy charm and planes. So I would definitely be keeping the planes on top so that I could cast the rabble master on turn three. Uh, I'm not sure what I would do with the Just Guy Charm here. I think it would depend on if our opponent has done anything relevant over the first, uh, you know, uh, two turns of the game. Um, I already have two Just Guy Charms in my hand. That being said, I do have, uh, now with this planes, a red, blue, and white source that uh, I can tap, you know, for no cost. I don't have to take any damage, like, from a Battlefield Forge or from a Mana Confluence. So, with a third Just Guy Charm, I know that I have... 12 points of burn in my hand. I could play the Rabble Master on turn 3 and then turns 4, 5, and 6. Even if I don't draw another land, I can use the uh, the Jeskai Charms plus the Stoke the Flames in my hand to potentially, you know, with, with the Magma Jet, that, that's 18 damage right there from burn spells. Um, I can use the Stoke to take out a problematic creature if I need to, and even if I don't draw another land, I can use the Rabble Master or its tokens, potentially, to to Stoke. So, I mean, considering that we're talking about a game here where we really don't know what our opponent is playing or we're just kind of theorizing at the moment, I think what I'd actually do is um, put them like this with Planes, Just Guy Charm, both back on top so that I can then, for turn three, untap draw the planes, play the planes, and um, probably lead with the Rabble Master. I don't know, if I felt like my opponent uh, was replete with removal, I might lead with the Hushwing Griff. Um, it, it depends on the game state and what they're playing, but I think against a slower opponent or, you know, an unknown opponent here where they we're just kind of theorizing about, I would probably play out the Rabble Master, and then the rest of my hand is pretty solid, and um, we would draw the, the Charm. And then a lightning strike, more burn, so yeah, very good. Um, so that is what I would do with that opening seven. All right, it's time for the opening seven. So we're going to look at uh, an opening hand here on the play against an unknown opponent, and we are going to analyze whether it is a, a keep or a mulligan. And the reason I'm laughing is the five cards here are land. So, that's not a land. That's not a land. So this is kind of an interesting one. <laughs> I, I, oh boy. So this one's kind of tricky, like, because I don't, it doesn't have a lot of action. Um, it can produce any of our colors easily. Like, this has two Mystic Monasteries, a Mountain, and this is primarily a red deck. Um, Shivan Reef and Temple of Enlightenment, so, I mean, we can produce, you know, we have one, two, three, four blue sources in our hand, we have one, two, three white sources in our hand, and we have uh, four red sources in our hand. So, mana is not an issue for this hand at all, and the temple can be played on turn one to help me to, to maybe scry away another land if another land is on top, but... If after that we keep drawing land, this hand doesn't do very much. Um, it plays a fragile flyer and maybe kills something. It it doesn't do very much. Um, this one's tough because I don't want to get stuck in a situation with this deck where I can't cast my spells, and this hand can cast anything that we draw reliably. It has five lands, so it can cast Sarkin, Storm Breath, like it can cast anything that we draw reliably, but we like don't really want to draw any more land for the for the next four or five turns after this, and that kind of concerns me. Um, I think I'm going to mulligan this hand. So we will be back in a moment for the opening six. All right, well, we're back for the opening six. We have uh, shuffled our deck. We're taking a mulligan here. So I see an island, a Shivan Reef, and a Stoke the Flames. I see a Rabble Master. I see a Seeker of the Way. So I really, <laughs> I really like this. I just want something that produces white mana. If this next card is something that produces white mana, this hand is awesome. Another Seeker of the Way. 
Whew, so this is this is a tough one. Um I don't want to go down to five. Uh we we I'd love to be able to hit the seeker on curve, but getting to turn four and playing double seeker on turn four isn't really that much of a problem, especially after playing a rabble master and you know, then being able to to play Stoke uh, off of Convoke. Um, also on turn four, like where you, you tap your mana to play the two Seekers, you've played the Rabble Master on turn three, so you can tap the two tokens, you know, and the two Seekers to Stoke if you need to, or you can just attack with the Rabble Master. Um, the thing is, we do need to draw another land, but I really don't want to mulligan down to, to five. Um, I think this is... This is kind of risky, but we can produce red and blue. Like we can definitely pay for the Rabble Master if we hit a land over over uh, our next few draws. This having the double seeker is is what makes this hand tough because like I'd love to be able to hit a seeker on turn two, like I said, or. You know, to hit the double seeker on turn four, we need to draw two white sources. So it's it's kind of risky, but so is the seven that we mulliganed away. Uh, I don't think I want to go down to five. Well, if I keep this, let's play it out. So I keep this. Um, I'm on the play here. Let's let's say so. I play the Shivan Reef, pass the turn on turn two. I draw Stoke the Flames. So I play an island and pass the turn, and on turn three. That's nice. I draw a white source. Okay. Uh, so I would play the white source. Goblin Rabble Master. Again, this is this is all just sort of like... I wouldn't necessarily... I mean, in this case, I would most likely play the Rabble Master over the Seeker of the Way. But that decision might change depending on what my opponent has done and what deck they're playing. So this is kind of just a... You know, if your opponent is doing nothing, how would I play out this hand? Which I know kind of isn't really strategically beneficial to actual interactive game states, but I do think that this kind of um, theoretical practice helps one to become familiar with the way their deck can curve out and the types of draws their deck can produce, so. Um, next turn, really like to draw another white source. Hey, hey, look, it's another planes. So just because that worked out it doesn't mean that this wasn't a risky hand. Like, this was a risky hand to keep. I just, I didn't want to mulligan down to five, and I felt like there was enough of a, of a chance to, to get to three mana, and I could just play out the Rabble Master and then have, you know, the, the Stokes there that um, it was worth keeping, though I didn't, you know, I, I clearly didn't think that six was without significant risk. <laughs> Thankfully, in this instance, we got there. And now on turn four, we can play Double Seeker of the Way. Turn five, we'll do one more turn. We draw a land, Battlefield Forge, and one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. So actually, if if we uh, have managed to keep the Rabble Master and his tokens alive, we'd have enough mana and enough creatures here to like double stoke if we want to on this turn. We, we would have, this is the third turn that the Rabble Master would be in play, so um, we could produce a third goblin token this turn. Um, cool. So. Mana Confluence. I will be back in just a moment for the wrap-up of this video. All right, so I hope you guys liked that uh, that exercise. I certainly had fun doing this, so if this is something that you like, I will be more than happy to do more of these in the future. I have another deck waiting in the wings that I can use to do this, this type of exercise, and perhaps in the future I will uh, even branch out and do some other formats like Commander, uh, or maybe even Draft. Maybe I'll even take... Uh, uh, a draft or sealed deck that I've uh, played and uh, before breaking it apart do an opening seven with with that so uh, let me know in the comments below what you prefer to see would you like to see limited opening sevens would you like to see standard modern commander what type of opening seven would you like to see most of course uh, I can't necessarily put together just any deck so with modern I would be using uh, a modern deck that I actually own um, you know, as opposed to just going out and buying Tarmogoyfs just so that I could do an opening seven with, <laughs> with like a, a Jund deck. But, uh, but that being said, let me know what you'd like to see the most for this type of video. If you like this type of video, I'll be more than happy to do uh, more of these in the future. So thank you once again, and this is Italian Magic signing out.